It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about backing up and saving all of your Docker and Docker volume information. I get this question quite a bit. People get things going in Docker and then they start realizing, okay, backing things up isn't quite as easy as I thought it would be. There's not really a great utility out there for doing this. There are some open source utilities out there that are kind of made to do this, but none of them really do exactly what people want, I think. Uh, so I wanted to talk about my process and, and kind of what I do and I cover this in a lot of the videos that I make So it's, it's really not a lot to it I'm gonna go through a quick presentation just because it was easier for me to put it together this way and put my thoughts together I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at patreon Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough If you're enjoying these videos subscribe let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So there's, really there's two things you want to worry about. One, the container itself. And then two, the volumes or the persistent data that you're trying to keep constantly. And I think really that second one is the more important of the two because you can always pull down the image and restart the container, but having the data and the volumes in place is, is kind of the hard part. And then sometimes the environment variables and some of the special configuration you have in the Docker compose file is also useful or makes it easy to bring things back up really fast. So really making you know the container itself backing it up isn't necessary unless you want to have that specific version of that container and replicate that across a lot of different instances for some reason in which case there's instructions on the docker side of how to create a container and then create and then turn that into a new image that you can then just kind of replicate so if you had a special way that you set things up you can then create that into a new image and run it that way but really if you have your docker compose and your and your docker run command saved and you have all your environment variables set up and you can set up your your new machine the same way you had before it's really easy to bring things back from from the dead basically uh, volumes, that's the big one that you really want to be able to back up. So whenever, you're, whenever you've got that persistent data, you want to set that up as volumes or binds where you're binding that volume to something on the host system. And then once you've got that, you can take that and just create a backup like you normally would of that data and then name it so that you know what it is. And whenever some, if, if something ever happens, which hopefully it doesn't, but if it ever does, you've got that, you can bring it back. And if you're doing that on a daily basis, that just makes it even better. If you have if you have data that's changing a lot, maybe an hourly basis is even better. But there's some some gotchas to, to backing up the volumes. So I have a top level Docker uh, folder, and then under that I have a folder for each application or service that I'm running. And then inside of those I have their different uh, volumes that I'm mounting a lot of times. So you can see these different kind of folders and this different kind of setup that I have for each of these applications. That's really how I do it because then all I have to do is take this top level Docker container, zip up everything inside of it, and then back up that zip file to some other off device kind of storage medium. That could be USB, that could be another computer on your network, that could be a NAS, that could be cloud storage. It's completely up to you how you do that and where you do that. But getting it off that machine in case there's a machine level failure is kind of your best bet. So I've, I've talked about kind of what I'm doing and that I'm zipping that up and just moving it off. That's really what that's about. So there's some things to keep in mind. It's always best to stop a container before you back up its data. It's very important that you stop that container before you back it up. Um, now you can do this and at night, so at night nobody's using my, my containers. These are just for my home use, for my family. Everybody's asleep in the middle of the night. So I can run this in the middle of the night and feel fairly confident that nothing was being changed or written. Um, and not have to stop those containers and, and usually there's no problems, but I definitely need to check those things to make sure there's not corruption once in a while. Um, but the best thing you can do is stop the containers because whenever you have databases like things with MySQL, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, any of those things which a lot of these applications have, if they're writing at the time that you run your backup, you could get corrupted data in that backup. So that's not what you want. So if you stop those containers, nothing's going to be writing that stuff. That volume's going to be sitting there static, and you can go ahead and back it up with pretty good confidence that it's going to be a good backup. Um, this could happen to anything actually just writing to the file system. This could also happen, but file systems tend to have pretty good protections in place to keep those kind of things from happening, but it still could happen, so just be aware of that. 
So the good news is that if your containers like mine are dead in the middle of the night, you can probably just run the backups without having to stop everything and it's going to be fine. But if you have any reason to believe that at the time you're running your backups, it could be in use or something could be writing that data, it's always better to stop it. And, and that can be scripted. It's not hard. So I'm going to go through how to do that. So we're done with the presentation. Yay. That's the part that everybody doesn't want to go through. So I've kind of run the tree command here just so you guys can see what I've got. So you see I've got this Docker folder and then below that I've got Dashy and there you go. So I've got my icons, I've got my public and then I've got Homebox and then I've got the Homebox data. So you can see each application that I'm running is all inside of my Docker. And then I've got their volumes mounted uh, if they need one to be mounted. So some of these are just testing things so I don't have anything mounted right now. But the ones that I'm really using I've got the volumes mounted. So when I've got that done, I can go back here and I've got this. Uh, let me let me clear this out in fact so that you guys can see this. Um, I've got this little bash script that I've written. So we're going to look at that guy. You always want to start with this shebang slash bin slash bash. Okay, that just tells the system, hey, this is going to be a bash script. The next thing I do is I grab the date from the system and I format it. And it's just the year hyphen month hyphen day format that this percent %f does. But writing this out correctly is important. So I have this in the show notes. It's dollar sign, open parentheses, and then no space, date, one space, and then plus, and then the single quote, percent F, single quote, and close parentheses. So there's no space between the plus and the, and the first uh, single quote there. So just be aware of that. If you put spaces in it, it will not format correctly. Next thing I'm doing is just echoing out that backup date for when I run it manually just to make sure I'm getting the date the way I expect. That's just a testing thing for me. You can get rid of that when you're ready. And then I move into the folder that I'm wanting to do some things in. So remember I said you want to stop these different containers from running and then start them back up. So what we're going to do is move into each containers or each applications folder. We're going to run the docker compose stop command on each one. So the nice thing is if like you have if you have a application which a lot of applications have a lot of containers that run. So if you have an application with a lot of containers that are running when you run that docker compose stop it stops all of the containers with that one command instead of having to write docker stop you know something dash app docker stop something dash db docker stop something dash you know nginx or whatever it may be running that just helps you this just does it all at once so it makes it a little bit simpler. So all I'm doing is I move into the dashy I stop it and then the cd dot dot slash means go back one level and then move into mesh central and then I stop it and then cd back one level dot dot slash into Navidrome and stop it and the same way cd dot dot slash speed, tra speed test tracker and stop it. Now I'm not doing all of them for this video I'm just giving you an idea but for every folder I had I would actually want to go do this and run the stop command just to stop them real quick and then I've got this uh, command that says now go back to my home directory because I want to run my zip up file, my zip file into that home directory. Now you could put that anywhere you want, but in my case I'm using home. Uh, and I'm going to run the tar command dash C, which is compress, Z, which is zip, and then V is verbose and F is force. I just leave it, it's fine, it doesn't really hurt anything. You can take out the V if you don't want to see it on the screen or if it's running in a, in a cron job, which is what I'll end up doing eventually. And then I'm going to name it docker backup, and then I'm going to use that variable that we created up here for the date so that I know which day this was from. And so it's going to have the backup date there, dot tar dot gz, and I'm going to save the docker folder. So I'm zipping up the docker folder. So first I tell it what I want to name it, then I tell it what I want it to have in it. So you can put more than one folder. You could put a space uh, right here, and you could do slash home slash Brian slash pictures for instance and that would get my docker folder and my pictures and zip them all up. I don't want to do that but that's something that you can do with the zip that's why you put what you're zipping up after you put the name of the file. So once that's finished zipping up I want to go back into my speed test tracker so I'm going to cd into docker because I'm in the home directory uh, slash speed test tracker and I'm going to do docker compose start to start it back up. And then I'm going to go back one level, so dot dot slash, Navidrome, and start. And the same thing for Mesh Central and the same thing for Dashy. And once those are finished, that's great. I've got everything started back up. Now I want to go back into my, my main home directory. I'm just echoing out of space. And I'm just putting something on the screen so I know it when I run it manually that it's running the rsync. And then I'm going to rsync 
and it's dash AZ. So this A says create an archive of it and Z means compress it. And I'm going to run this, this rsync that says run this Docker backup that I just created, this file, and rsync it over to my other machine that I want it in. And I have a backups folder over there where I'm backing up my Docker stuff. So this, this little script does everything that we've talked about. We're gonna basically compress our Docker image and we're going to back it up. So really simple, we're gonna back it up to another machine. Now you could set this up so that it's got a cloud backup, you know, running off of this, this folder on this other machine. There's all kinds of different ways that you could do this. You could run this to a USB drive, you could run this in lots of ways. I'm just moving it to a, to a different machine on my network. And in this case, for the example, this is actually going to a different virtual machine on the same physical server, so it's not the best way to back it up. But I could do this to anything. It's just an example for you guys to kind of see how this can be done and things that you can do. Now, there are tools out there for running backups as well. So you could use this script to just create the tar file and then use something like UR Backup to have that backup moved over to your backup server. You could use something like Duplicati to move it to the cloud storage or duplicacy to move it to cloud storage. So there's a lot of different options and different things out there that can do backups. And there's all kinds of great tools out there for doing backups. It's really up to you how you kind of work through that. I think the most important part, honestly, is to get to this point that you've actually created your, your GZ file and then you restart all your containers and then how you move the backup over is really up to you. I'm just giving you one, one way to do it, which is rsync, which is great. Um, rsync is really fast and it does a good job of, of doing things. So, I've kind of walked through this. I'll have this in the show notes so you can go look at it and kind of take it, you know, kind of see what I'm doing. Now, you wouldn't want to copy it directly. You'd want to modify it for your setup, of course. Uh, and then I'm just going to save that just in case I made any changes. I'm going to exit and we will actually run this thing. So I'm going to do sudo backup, maybe uh, dot slash backup. There we go. And it's going to prompt me for my super user password. And I do sudo because a lot of the Docker volumes themselves that are created run in root inside the container, so they have some weird permissions. So it's just better to do it this way to keep you from having any permissions issues. So it's going to go through and it's going to stop all of my different containers. Mesh Central takes a little longer to stop than, than some of the others, but um, once they stop, then it's going to create that archive file and it's going to start them back up and then it'll rsync. All right, so if I jump over to my other machine, I'm already in the folder that we talked about where those backups are going. So if I do an LS, you'll see I've got one from the 20th and then I've got one from today. So you can tell that I've got two different backups of my, of my archives. So as you go, this older backup may not be useful, but it's usually good to keep like two or three, maybe four versions, just in case something's wrong with some of the ones that you've made recently. Maybe you didn't catch a problem that you had for the last week and, and you want to keep some of those. These aren't super huge. Um, they're, they're a few hundred megabytes. Um, let's see. Yeah, so 305 megabytes and then this one's 317 megabytes. So you can see that I've added data since two days ago. So, you know, a dozen, you know, 10 megabytes or so. So yeah, I mean, it's worth doing these backups on a regular basis because you can see I'm getting more data. Now a lot of this could be log data. Uh, there's ways to kind of say ignore logs and things like that and different tools that are out there. So again, other ways of doing things are sometimes better, sometimes harder, sometimes easier, just depends. But I'm just giving you the way that I do this to kind of feel like, hey, I've got things backed up and I can bring it back if I need to pretty easily without having to go through a ton of trouble and losing all of my data. So I'm gonna clear this out. Now, the other part we talked about, so what I'll do is I'll go in and I'm gonna modify that script real quick. So I'm gonna say nano backup, and I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom where it does the rsync, and I'm gonna switch this to SCP. And I don't need to do sudo anymore. And I'm gonna say, yeah, that, just that. And that's gonna to try to send it over without having to have the rsync in place. So I'm gonna just save that and exit. And then I'm gonna clear this out. And I'm going to do uh, cron, I'm gonna do sudo cron tab because I have to actually set this up as a cron job. So if you run cron tab like this with just cron tab dash E, it's gonna open it up as a regular user. But if you need to run something that has pseudo privileges necessary and things like that to run, you need to do sudo crontab 
dash E. The first time you run it, it's going to ask you which text editor you want to use. Just type in the number of the text editor you want, and it'll open it up in that text editor from then on. So for me, I use Tanano. It's fine. If you scroll down, they give you information about how to set up the cron, and they explain what the different things mean. But it's it's minute, and then hour, and then day of month, uh, month, and then day of week. So this is, in this case up here, you've got 0 and 5. So that's 5 a.m., and it's every day of the month in every month of the year, but only on the first day of the week. Now it starts as zero is Sunday, so one is Monday. Two Tuesday, three Wednesday, four Thursday, five Friday, six Saturday. This is how it works. So you can set this to go off at any time you want on any day of the week that you want. Now if you put a star here, it would do it every single day of the week and it would do it every, every day at 5 a.m. So if you want this to be a daily backup, you would change this to star. So if we go down here and we say we want to run ours every day and I want to run it at 0 and 3, 3 a.m. Everybody should be asleep. Star, space, star, space, star. That's going to run every day at 3 a.m. And what do I want it to run? I want it to run the slash home slash Brian slash backup docker dot sh. I want it to run that command. So I'm going to say bash and it's going to run that for me. So this is what it's going to do. It's going to run that script every day. I'm going to save it and I'm going to exit. And now it'll start running that thing and it'll SCP things over and it'll make everything move into that folder that I said. And every day it's going to have the correct date for when it ran and I'll know which date it was. Now eventually I need to go and look and make sure I'm not filling up that other drive. So there's things in that script that you can do up at the top to tell it get rid of the you know, ones that are older than so many days and things like that. And I can go into that in another video if you guys are interested. But people have asked me about how to do this and how I do this. This is the way I do it. It's kind of manual, but um, it really works. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.